The two blue vortex manga is about to enter its flashback saga very soon and what it means for the story is really exciting. Kishimoto has crafted the best possible timescape for Boruto with mysteries lying all over the floor. From the fate of Sasuke to Boruto's Uzuhiko having divine connection, all of these questions will be answered very soon so let's get into them. At number 10, we have got Sasuke Uchiha and his mysterious role during the time skip. While the theories of his death have been going around from the beginning of the show, some other angles have arised in the story which put his disappearance into a whole new perspective. Before we discuss them, there are a few things that are worth mentioning. First of all, neither Code nor Boruto talked about Sasuke or gave hints of what happened to him. What's more interesting is that Sarada upon seeing Boruto suddenly appear from the sky did not show any interest in her father's well-being. I mean he could literally be dead but still Sarada didn't bother to inquire Boruto about him. The spectacular entry made by Boruto made her speechless and she readily agreed to leave him and Code alone. This gesture of Sarada made me think of two things. Firstly it could be that Sasuke is not that important to Sarada cause they didn't have the right circumstances to build such bond. The reason Kishimoto gave Sarada the manga in queue early is probably because she wouldn't have unlocked it if she was informed about Sasuke's death which would have been really disrespectful. She seemed seems to be more aligned with Boruto than her father and that's why she didn't think of Sasuke when he returned. Secondly, a positive angle to this scenario could be her belief in Sasuke. She knows that her father is a legendary shinobi and must be alright no matter the circumstances. However, if her gesture actually reflects her disinterest in Sasuke's well-being, then I think she will be playing the same role as her mother. Well, regardless of what his daughter feels, the fate of Sasuke is a huge time skip mystery. The theory which makes the most sense to me is Sasuke getting devoured by by a claw grime and becoming a tree. Only because Boruto must be aware of this tree formation angle of ten tails and he must have got to know about this when he saw his master getting eaten by a claw grime. Chances are he might have then relocated the tree of Sasuke with the help of Kashin Koji. It makes sense cause Kishimoto wanted to remove both Naoto and Sasuke from the plot to let the next generation take over. He even said in an interview that if it's for the story then he won't mind if Naoto died. After all it's not his show anymore. However being an experienced mangaka, he must have realized that it would dishearten the fans if Naoto or Sasuke are killed. So he came up with something smart to make them irrelevant to the story. With the 7th Hokage trapped in another dimension and the shadow Hokage transformed into a tree, Kishimoto saved the series from tons of backlash and fallout. There are some other hints for Sasuke's survival without the possibility of him becoming a tree. First and foremost, the getup of Boruto has been taken from the Uchiha. So if he had become a tree, it shouldn't have been possible for him to take his outfit. Secondly, his attire as of now is neat. Unlike the prologue scene where he got his lean turned off, this means we are about to witness some brutal fights really soon. But as of now, there are no signs of a life-threatening injury on Sasuke's clothing. Even Ko didn't talk about Sasuke at any point, which wouldn't have been the case if he was killed. Ko must have flexed killing Sasuke in front of his daughter if he had actually done something like that. While I don't think Sarada would have done something remarkable against Ko, even after hearing the news of her father's death due to the things that I mentioned earlier. Now this brings us to number 9. It was mentioned in the story that Boruto and Kod had battled each other almost 2 years ago which happened a year after he left the village with Sasuke. The first theory says it was Boruto who did this to Kod which is why he said to him that he will lose more than his left eye this time. This would mean that Boruto had used a sword to slash him down which most likely belonged to Sasuke. Otherwise it seems like Sasuke had just bought Boruto a similar attire and sword as him and it doesn't prove anything regarding his fate. Similar to how Might Guy and Rock Lee shared the same outfit back in Naruto. Secondly, it could be Sasuke who gave Code a scar on his left eye. If he has got the scar from a shinobi who got clapped by Jigen. After all, he is said to possess more raw power than the Kara boss. Moving on to number 8. Let's talk about the daughter who doesn't care about her dad and if her role will have any huge significance to the plot. Sarada played a great part in Boruto's destiny by sending Sasuke to his rescue. But what about about her own personal development. Will she become a fodder character who needs to be rescued every time and is just a burden on his teammates? Or is she going to play a vital role in the story considering the contribution of Sasuke to the plot of Naruto? I remember Sarada was once hated by the fandom for wearing glasses even though she bore the Uchiha blood. And people also criticized the fact that she had to be saved by a common Jonin in chapter 2. These hints indicate she might turn out as her mother Sakura and won't have anything to do with Sasuke's legacy. But if she does awaken a unique Mangenkyu ability, then it's highly possible that it will have something to do with time. And here is why. 
The time factor has played a huge role in the dark legacy of Boruto. Momoshiki gave him the karma after stopping time. He was revived by the monster with the stoppage of time. The omnipotence rewrote his entire identity and history, which proved to be really devastating. And it has been prophesied that when the right time comes, his right eye would enlighten the world from darkness. The reason I believe Sarada's power is also time related is because of the shape of her Mangenkyu being too similar to a clock. The dial on her Mangenkyu could shift clockwise or anti-clockwise according to the power she is using. One of the most efficient powers that she could use is the ability of peeking into the past of an individual. In this way she would be able to know the history of her ancestors alongside some flaws in the plans of Kawaki. She could even have a foresight power similar to the one used by Buruto but she must be able to use it at will. The time stoppage ability could also come handy to Sarada but I feel like it's only limited to Momoshiki. Sarada's experience with Aida's ability changing people's memories could also have some impact on her Mangi Q power. She could get the power that would be able to see the truth of the situation. This would result in an ability that automatically analyzes the world around her, finding the weak points of her enemies and seeing how certain abilities work. Like if she was fighting Kawaki, her ability would passively analyze him and predict the trajectory of his roars. I will call this power the Yosuko of Uchiha Sarada cause that's the Japanese translation of prediction. It would even give her an advantage against the top tier enemies like the Osusukis as she would be able to predict their next moves effortlessly. She could even prove to be a huge asset to Boruto who would be fighting really powerful foes and with the coordination of Sarada he will have an easy win against most of them. Another reason for why I think Sarada might be just like Sakura also stems back to Boruto's entry. Think about it, if Sasuke had appeared to defeat Code instead of his student, Sarada would have definitely asked him about Boruto. It's all about priorities and her role in the story could get a bit emotional and darker due to this love factor. Only because of the point of view that the whole world shares on Boruto. Imagine Sarada wanting to stay with him regardless of what everyone thinks of him. But Boruto would want her to stay away and protect her image. He wants to ensure she doesn't get into trouble which is why he might behave harshly towards her to save her from the consequences. As said by Ishiki, destiny lies in the genes of a person. The same could apply for Boruto and Sarada as well. While Boruto will be the savior of the world just like Naruto, Sarada will find herself as a hopeless romantic similar to Sakura due to the irreversible divine spell. Talking about omnipotence, how were Sumire and Sarada immune to it at first place? I don't agree with any theory stating either wanted friends with whom she could open up or things like that. The omnipotence materializes the deepest desire of the user and I don't think she craved friendship that much. But she did desire the love of Kawaki with all her heart which could have led to her subconscious wishing for eliminating all the romantic competition. We know Sarada and Sumire are in love with Boruto and if they weren't immune to omnipotence, it would have made them fall for Kawaki. So in order to avoid a situation like that, the omnipotence kept Sarada and Sumire immune from the beginning. And since it's a divine power also known as the Shinjutsu of Shinjutsus, it might be able to foresee the future to avoid any contradictions in its effects. Well that's actually a good theory, assuming this ability has a will of its own. But let's discuss that some other time. Talking about abilities, let's Let's move on to number 7 where we have the techniques learned by Kawaki in the time skip. He has transformed his dharma eye into the final form which was even used by Ishiki. Now whether this eye evolves with time or training is one of the mysteries that the flashback arc could solve. If Kawaki has actually trained way harder than Boruto then it could be that this dojutsu is directly correlated to the power level of the user. The more the user gets powerful the more triangles awaken in this eye. But how was he able to become so stronger without a mentor? Well he literally has a dimension where time doesn't apply to anyone. So if the concept of this realm provides him unlimited time then it could be that he has trained for decades in just under 3 years. Similar to how Frieza turned into Black Frieza in Dragon Ball Super. He used the hyperbolic time chamber to do some hard training for 10 years and same could have been the case with Kawaki. What's interesting about him is that we already know how he's going to turn out. The flashback part of the story could reveal that why he started hating ninjas at first place. He definitely definitely sees them as inferior creatures but there must be a huge reason behind this all out war that he has started against them. A glimpse of the past could give us a few hints explaining why he went so far at first place. Talking about dark development, let's talk about Mitsuki and what he might have been doing in the time skip period. The change of nature that omnipotence had on him is really mind blowing. He went from a Boruto sim to a Boruto killer in a matter of seconds and what's interesting is that he still believes Kawaki is the son who will enlighten him. The influence of Kawaki that he's having on himself is slowly turning him to a bloodthirsty warrior who only wants his target dead which is Boruto. This reminds me of Sasuke and Itachi's relationship where the younger Uchiha was more
motivated to kill him all his life, but had a change of heart upon hearing the truth. And just because it's pretty unlikely to happen in Mitsuki's case, it builds a strange dynamic between him and Boruto. The elements of fate and destiny play a huge role in the plot of the story, so Mitsuki must be no exception to this and could be following a path that his genes have decided for him. He might also share a parallel with his father Orochimaru, which would make his legacy a lot interesting. The omnipotence making him an enemy of Boruto, who is literally the savior of the whole world, also makes his actions similar to his father. It could even be that he went to Orochimaru in the time skip period to get a new power up. So the flashback arc could unveil some mysteries about Misuki too. Now let's move on to the character whose disappearance is as mysterious as Sasuke. I'm talking about Momoshiki and why he is nowhere to be seen in 2 Blue Vortex. Whatever has happened to the Osusuki shall be revealed in the flashback arc. So let's take a look at a few possibilities. The first theory talks about the Jogun awakening and how it might have safeguarded Boruto from Momoshiki's possession. The Jogun translates to pure eye, which could mean that the user would get rid of anything impure from his body after awakening this power. By this we can conclude Momoshiki being an impure addition to Boruto's consciousness must have ceased to exist with the pure eyes awakening. Another theory draws an interesting contrast between the legacies of Naruto and Boruto. While Naruto got a monster sealed inside of him by his father, what if Boruto gets his monster removed from his body by a father figure? It could be that Sasuke used the Reaper Death Seal or some similar never before seen Fuinjutsu to extract Momoshiki from Boruto's consciousness. We already know he wants to fulfill his resolve of saving the shinobi world, so maybe getting rid of Momoshiki somehow will bring honor to his name. The final theory of Momoshiki's return deals with the possibility of them learning a way to live together due to the irreversible circumstances. Momoshiki accepted his fate of not being able to take over Boruto, so maybe now he's helping him, similar to how Kurama helped Naruto. At number 4, we have got the cyborg siblings and the possibility of their backstory appearing as flashbacks. While it might not be a part of the forthcoming flashback arc, it's very likely that we will soon get a glimpse into the history of this duo. There are many mysteries surrounding their origin and if they have any ties to the Osusuki clan, the fact that they were able to take on the pressure of the DNA of an Osusuki god proves that they are not ordinary humans at all. They must have some connection to the Osusukis, most likely a blood relation which made them compatible with Shibai Osusuki. Moreover, in the latest chapter, Demon was able to identify the power of Boruto by sensing his surroundings. Even Aida wasn't able to comprehend what's going on, but her sibling instantly figured everything out. This means Demon has some special ability to identify the techniques of his opponent. And even if we don't get a proper explanation in the flashback arc, I will be covering this topic this week, so don't forget to subscribe. At number 3, we have got a mind-blowing connection between Shibai Osusuki and Boruto. A glimpse of past could provide us a clear explanation of how they are related. There have been a lot of hints in the story, like Boruto's horn resembles Shibai, they have the Jogun in the same eye, and both of them were shown to summon a vortex around them. Moreover, Amado revealing Shibai's use of wind water and lightning jutsu isn't a pure coincidence at all. It aligns with Boruto wielding the same chakra natures, which yet another time indicates Kishimoto's deliberate foreshadowing, which elevates Boruto Boruto as a storytelling masterpiece. Shibai making an appearance in the flashback arc is highly possible. Momoshiki or Kashinkoji could drop some more intel about him, or it could even be that Boruto has somehow learned his divine techniques. His mysterious ability Uzuhiko solidifies such possibility and here is why. This technique dealt with the rotation of the planet's chakra and was referred to as a planetary spin by Daemon. The fact that he gave his thoughts on this ability means that it's actually a big deal. If it wasn't a broken power, Daemon would have never mentioned it at first place. And the fact the fact that he is the most overpowered character raises concern on the origin of this ability. What's more interesting is that when an Osusuki devours a planet, he must also consume the chakra of its rotation as well. It could be that when Boruto went missing for two years, he was eating the chakra fruits of multiple planets which granted him this power. This also explains why this power looks similar to Shibai summoning tornadoes around him. Moreover, the plot of Boruto might be following the footsteps of Samurai 8, the other manga of Kishimoto which didn't perform that well. By this we can conclude Boruto will definitely meet the Osusuki god towards the end of the story, as Hachimaru also met the warrior god at the same point. The addition that Kishimoto has made in Boruto revolves around the main character learning the abilities of the most supreme character till he reaches his level. But what if Uzuhiko doesn't have ties to Shibai, rather a character who has returned in the story? This brings us to number 2, one of the most anticipated mystery of the series, the return of Kashin Koji. In the third chapter, Boruto was shown to use Torch to spy on Code, which means he had been training under Jiraiya's clone in the time skip. But how did they both meet at first place? Could it be that Koji replaced Sasuke or did they both train him simultaneously? Well, the time slip arc of the anime had already foreshadowed this trio and it's very much possible that Koji took the role of Boruto's mentor after he was cornered by Code in their first fight. The reason I think he might have 
paste code alone is because of a mind blowing possibility. So hear me out. The omnipotence had changed the viewpoint of everyone towards Boruto and Kawaki and no one even questions the obvious inconsistencies. Sarada even said that the effects of this spell worsen with time which means the more the time passes the more a person starts believing in the new reality. So what if something similar happened to Sasuke and he decided to break alliance with Boruto. He could have attacked him at some point when all his intuitions would have been overshadowed by omnipotence. Chances are he no longer suspects him as an innocent. This could be the time when Koji entered the story to save the day and took Boruto with him. Further he could have taught him the Uzuhiko Rasengan which was apparently derived from one of the abilities of Shibai of Susuki. He must have some intel on the of Susuki god only because he has spent years working with Amado. Maybe that's how he trained him with the Uzuhiko cause only an of Susuki can pull off a technique which uses the rotation of a planet. The return of Koji also brings back a big plot point to the show. I'm talking about the child of prophecy who will be the savior of the whole world. It could be that he is the virgin of Jiraiya that was being referenced by the Toad Sage. Maybe the connection that Jiraiya had with Naruto was necessary to build the relationship of Boruto and Koji. It could be that the clone of Jiraiya is motivated by his genetics to help Boruto and all of it was pre-planned from the beginning. The reason Kishimoto brought the concept of predestined genes could have been for the sake of building a sensible and impactful role of Koji in Boruto's life. Moreover, Kashin Koji was made to kill Ishiki of Suzuki and since Code wants to finish what Ishiki had started, it makes sense for Koji to train Boruto against him. The whole point of him training Boruto is to prevent an Osusuki from devouring the planet and just because Code is fulfilling the will of Ishiki, his elimination could be the main goal of Koji. In other words, Kashin Koji is just following the mighty fate of Jiraiya to save the whole world from any possible destruction. Moving on to the biggest flashback reveal of Boruto, we have got the Jogen and how he might have unlocked it during the time skip. The last panel of chapter 3 shows him with a hand sign that he used in the prologue scene while activating the pure eye. And what's even crazier is that Ikimoto has kept the right eye of Boruto hidden in this panel. This could only mean one thing. When the story would return from the flashbacks, we would see Boruto with the most awaited power. So how will Kishimoto introduce the most hyped element in the story? Well, I think he is going to put Boruto in a situation where only a miracle can save him. Like a deathmatch against Code, which would awaken his Jogen without intent for the very first time. As we have seen the abilities of this eye in the anime before, it would most likely teleport him to a safer place. Now whether it would be some other dimension or the moon is the most anticipated mystery. But a bigger mystery revolves around the Uzuhiko and its connection to the Uzumaki clan. Find out more about this theory in this video and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing stuff. I will see you next time.